basically, like I've said, um, and people are probably sick of it, of course, but um, basically the whole JFK thing was apparently over the fact that basically it was my White House and um, and it was my D.C. building and it was my government and I had named America. And basically JFK and a bunch of other people were basically trying to keep that from being known about. Keep me, Brian, from being known about. But that's like keeping Lucifer Starline from being known about. I mean, why would there be a white star line without a Lucifer, a Lucifer star line? So, and realistically, they thought that they could keep me from being known about, you know, just like Rodney and Rick Bush and other people thought that, you know, no one would ever know about who I was or where I was or what I was, that they could somehow keep it from being known that I had adjusted the Constitution and also owned the Britannic and the and well the Titanic was the royal men's ship or real or or Republicans men's ship I think or something like that I don't really know something something I don't know that was so that's why it was called the RMS uh, Titanic or something like that and of course there are LS ships as well and SS ships as well SS stands for Lucifer Starline or star basically I guess it would be LSL, basically. Um, but whatever. That wasn't until later on that I added the L. So, um, but basically, you know, my parent company or the company that I was under. So, and I only owned like a couple ships and then I would sell them to other people. And of course, they would repaint the name and add RMS or whatever as basically they were the new owners. Like people were saying I sold the, the Titanic. And I suppose maybe I did. I don't really know. I don't really don't care. I thought I didn't, but um, because I had forgotten, I was you know I was I had been, I was thrown for a loop. I mean they they lobotomized me for for the love of everything. Like they were really trying to kill me or trying to eliminate me or stop me from being known about. They were trying to kill me when I was like six years old, nine years old. So I would never have made these videos, and you would have never known about me. Also, they could pretend like they were me. There was someone else that was trying to basically take my place and publicly say to the world that they were Lucifer Star, or the LS, but they weren't, so, anyway, like I say, you know, whatever, I mean, we have a problem, like I said, what it all came down to, basically, is I designed a perfect system of government, and everything was running, was working very nicely, and all that, and, um, they uh, realized that they didn't need me to be around. Anyone could run my government or my country. Countries. What did I do with my water? I lost my water. Uh oh. Hold on. Where's my water? Yep, I lost my water. It's gone. It's gone forever. Ah, the darkness. Anyway, yeah. So, um,. And like I said, the whole thing with JFK basically is that, um, and like I say, he wasn't actually supposed to die. He actually anticipated, Jackie was the one that was actually supposed to get the shot in the head. She was actually supposed to die. Well, I mean, not according to my plan. This is their plan. Of course, I'm just telling you what their plan was. What was supposed to happen is he was supposed to be driving, they were supposed to be driving along, According, I'm saying what what I, what I was told basically, that they're supposed to be driving along, and a bullet was supposed to strike her in the back of the head, and kill her. And he was supposed to go, "Oh my God, my wife, my wife, my wife," and be grief stricken, and, and basically, and basically, and then and then people would have found out that that it was Russia or it was China, and they had assassinated. Uh, the first lady, blah, 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 you know, it, it's some sort of like sick whatever thing, you know, to get back at whatever. And uh, and then America was going to go to war over it, you know. And it was all a lie. So, anyway, realistically what, what happened is, he, is, is uh, Kennedy wanted out of the marriage. He wanted to leave her. But he didn't, like... Like I say, they were having sex with, with, um, with, um, 
uh, Marilyn Monroe and all these other women in Hollywood and all this other stuff and paying for sex and everything so he didn't want to be with her anymore and she didn't want to be with him but anyway though but whatever so basically she was gonna gonna get a bullet to the back of the head instead of getting a divorce and he was going to uh, then they would go and attack Russia or China and um, <clears throat> and be done with it and then they would be waging war in China or Russia like I said he didn't care keeping me at people busy or something like that so you know people were gonna find out that was actually the Russian leader and then blah blah, blah and then there would be a war or something like that although I think what the problem was is that they could, Russia was like we're not gonna attack you you know or something like that I don't really know like I say I don't really know I don't really care you have to ask some of the other people in the world at the time basically it was a whole plot to start a war you know as it was they expected America to go to war over it and like I say I basically volunteered and basically stepped up or you know people set, stepped up and pretty much said you know the countries had nothing to do with it it was me he was living in my white house he wanted to change the laws apparently uh, Nixon and JFK and other people were saying to just do his part baby you know, and basically, they were doing a lot of really bad things. So, and they were living inside of Lucifer White Star's house, my house. And they were told to leave, vacate the premises. He was not allowed to be there. And um, they didn't want to leave. So, we even built a house for him. So, anyway, though, whatever. Anyway, so, and my other countries were basically going to kick him out of the house. But apparently he was a big, powerful man, or something like that. So I don't know. <sighs> Whatever. You know, what do I care, really? He's just one guy. And like I said, they had actually stolen the cars, the, the, the cars, and were driving them around, or something like that. I don't know. So. Anyway, there's a lot of history and, like, you know, stuff. And like I said, lots of Secret Service agents told, told about how they would hear women screaming for help from the White House or from the guest house, basically. Like I said, they told the police not to respond to the sounds of women screaming for help around around the White House. That's how bad it was. Because women were would, would be screaming and, like I say, Nixon or somebody else would just say, yeah, she really loved it last night. I don't know why you'd be screaming for help or screaming. I, I, they were actually screaming for help. People reported that there were women screaming for help around the White House. And like I said, it was a pretty quiet place, really, at one point in time. There wasn't a lot of noise out there. So you could hear women screaming for help for miles. So there were women screaming for help. And um, and basically, um, basically, so, you know, from the house. So, and people were like, Jesus, man, it's coming from the house, from the house. Like... Like, I mean, the cops called the house, and the, and, and the White House would be like, no, no, there's no one here, blah, 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 or something like that, or they'd tell them some, like, excuse or lie or something like that. Anyway, though, and lots of police, and like I said, there's even a police chief's daughter that was, you know, going partying or something like that, and she disappeared or something like that. And so there's a police chief that was actually looking for what's called, and he ended up being disappearing too. So, anyway. Or he was shot by someone, I don't know. Anyway, she was a really cute girl, and I guess, I don't know. And whatever. Besides, like I said, uh, they were lying about a lot of things, and basically, eventually, the truth does come out, or they eventually slip up and say something to someone, and they start saying things, and, you know, that was a very bad, big big problem for JFK and Jimmy Carter and Richard Nixon. And they were lying about everything. And they had done some really bad things, including holding... A lot of Germans hostage to mine for them, and also to try and make guns for them. They had they, they had taken a lot of Germans, and they had had them making clips for guns, and the Germans were making them bad clips that wouldn't actually work. They would jam on them, and stuff like that. The Germans could have easily made like they they invented the hundred mag clip and all that other stuff, and so they had had found some Germans that were good with with engineering or something like that, or good at fabricating things, and they had captured them and held them hostage inside of a mine and had had them and were trying to force them to make, you know, gun clips and stuff like that. And so the Germans made them clips that would jam. 
and didn't really work. The parts were made just slightly off, but slightly enough that they would jam fairly easily. So anyway, don't fuck with an engineer, basically. And they were fucking with engineers. And the, the Germans knew that they were probably going to get killed after they did whatever they did. So anyway, yeah, it's a long story and involves like some European cities and some other stuff. And also, like I said, there was that illegal checkpoint where they were pretending to be soldiers and just frisking up German women. Like I said, German women were very gorgeous. German women were absolutely like, like, like if you want to know what a German woman looked like, just look at a Swedish girl. Like the Swedish girls or the Swedish women of, of Sweden, stuff like that. And some of the most gorgeous, they're, they're the most gorgeous women, you know, on the planet, basically. They're really, really good looking. But they were also like normal women, normal looking women. So, and they, and they would also be able to live, live until, until like they were like 80 or so or 90 and still look like they were like 60. So they, they had really, really good g genetic code. So basically, um, so these women, so these, so these, so these men, Jimmy Carter, whatever, they were, they're basically like, yeah, let's check you out. Yeah. Let's make sure there's nothing in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, yeah, let's check down here. Yeah, yeah, you know, with the, with these German girls, basically, and just feeling them, you know, up inside their crotch and sticking their fingers inside in, inside their vagina and stuff, and the girls didn't like it, and they were doing this to young girls as well at this checkpoint, you know. So anyway, though, and they had been doing this for quite a while for for quite a while. So Jimmy Carter and then Jimmy Carter, Richard Nixon, or one of them, some of them had wanted to, they had finally want, thought about aspiring to greater, higher, higher, more loftier, loftier goals than just, you know, frisking up women and stuff like that. Anyway, so yeah, so I don't really know, I don't really care, but they basically blamed the, um, the Red Cross for, um, for pretty much poisoning the, the food, of course, and, 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 the, and, the, and the Red Cross actually was, was giving out the food blanketly to everyone of the town. So they didn't even take the food to the town. The people had to come to the Red Cross to get the food. And like some people were taking, and it was at Christmas time or something, some people were sending wagons down to, to, the, to, to the city where the port was and getting the food from there and then taking it back up to the, uh, to the other city. And the base city didn't have any poisoning in it. It was only the one city that was up in the mountains that was actually poisoned. So it was definitely not the Red Cross that poisoned the food. The food got poisoned in between, and then, like I said, they checked the records, and there was an illegal. There's a checkpoint right there that, that 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 all the carts had to go through. And so, anyway, and so these guys gave out the presents and the poisoned food, and they made sure that the adults or the older people, and mostly the men, got sick, and they actually died from the poison. And um, and the Germans noticed that they, they that they were they would give out the food to certain people first, you know, like the adults first, and then and then the children, or whatever, and then the men came in and raped the girls, and it was soldiers um, like Jimmy Carter, John McCain, or some those people. I don't really know. Anyway, so yeah. And they wanted to cover up that, and they stole all the watches, they stole everything. And uh, raped the people, and they thought they could just do whatever they wanted. You know, if no one lived, then no one would ever know, right? Except, I wondered why that horse would stop at that one little spot in the road every time. Like I said, there was this cart. And the cart had been there for a long time. The horse was old. And it would always stop at this one spot in the road, and it would sniff the ground. And then it would walk on. And I had the power to find out. So. It all started because I had sent out the thing asking for my people to find, because I had known about lots of things in the universe, and I was looking for weird things in the universe. And so the so someone sent in a letter about this horse in the cart. And so an investigation started on the horse in the cart. 
And I suppose some other people knowing about the truth about the horse and the cart and what they had been had done like 20 years before as uh, as teenagers or whatever or young kids. Might have realized that there was a problem. And it wasn't just anyone asking, it was me. So. And then they uncovered the bodies of the of the German soldiers that were shot, and then they uncovered the bodies of the British soldiers that were shot, or the English soldiers that were shot. That were supposedly shot by Germans. But the Germans were dead in their camp. And obviously hadn't attacked the British. And like I said, the position of the bodies, because they had just covered over the trenches with the bodies in there and everything. They hadn't even bothered to bury them. They just took a bulldozer and just covered over the trenches. And so the way the bodies were laying and the way the bodies were sitting was basically like they, weren't, or they were at rest. Their guns were still next to them, in fact, or still across the trench from them. So obviously someone had walked up and just shot them, someone that they thought was a friend. The radio equipment might have been stolen. I don't really know. But basically, they found the men in the trenches could just buried with the guns and everything. Mostly, I think. I forget. It was also the body position that gave it away, too. Anyway, like I said, and both the German camp and the English or British camp had been killed. It was only like 16 or 12 soldiers or something, or 32 soldiers. It wasn't really, they weren't big camps or anything like that. They were just like little positions. I forget what they were doing. Anyway, though, whatever. So, yeah, you know, a whole lot of evidence, a whole lot of truth. And like I said, you know, basically, and then later on, Jimmy Carter, Richard Nixon, all these other people would want to become president and leaders and all this other stuff. And the only problem was I owned Germany and America and the White House. And like I say, well, I don't really care, you know, and like... The point was, was but, but I mean, I had the money to find out, and I had the money to care about it. And, yeah, so, and I would find out, and it would be known, especially with the way I was going after dinosaur bones and everything else, and they were slowly sifting. Like I said, many of these archaeological digs, digs they, really, they literally took screens, and they would screen 2,000 yards of dirt slowly getting every single little piece of everything that was inside the dirt out of it. We had the screens, we had the technology, we had the power. You know, hook up a little vibrator to it. And you're going now, man. You're screening hundreds of thousands of yards of dirt. So if there's anything in those fields, they were going to find them. <laughs> they were going to find it. And they did. So, oh well. Yes, you just have to ask the congressman about what he was doing in Europe. So anyway, oh well. Yeah, you know. Anyway, the the farmers were were the, the food was wrapped in foil co coverings or something like that, and the farmers would take hay and they would stack it up on top of the, on top of the food to keep the food warm. So the food, because it was like a 30-minute trip or 40-minute trip between the town and the, um, and, the, and the other town where the food was. And like I said, it was around Christmas time, and the soldiers were supposed to be going home. That was another thing, is, is the timing of it all. Um, they chose to do it, do this action when there weren't, weren't going to be very many soldiers around. Most soldiers had gone home or most people had gone home for the holidays or would be home for the holidays basically and not around. So they thought they could get away with stuff like feeling up and frisking and even forcing some young girls to have sex or some wives to have sex. These women were married women with rings and everything. And they took the rings and I think they might have even said something callous like, oh, you're not married now, you know, and had sex with them. Anyway, I don't really know. Um, you have to ask the Red Cross and some other people. And like I said, the thing was also is that they signed the ledger coming into the town, and they signed the ledger leaving the town. And of course, when you come into a town, and the thing is also is that, is that when they came into the town, when they first went there, they were good, honorable soldiers. 
And over the course of their deployment, they would come up with these plans and things would go wrong and things happened. And so the ledgers showing their actual true name of when they came to the town and everything else like that were already at home office and already copied and already everything. And there was a brand new ledger back in the thing. So when they went to sign the book on their way out, knowing that they were guilty as whatever, and putting, possibly putting down fake names or whatever, they looked back in the pages probably and they couldn't find their name in there originally, and it didn't go back that far, because that book was already gone. They replaced the books every two weeks or every, every week or so with a brand new book. So anyway, yeah. So that meant that they had to go in search of some record office somewhere in some country. So anyway, it was going to take them a while, and to no avail. And even when they found the record book and they, and they raided the building and killed everybody inside and got the copy or got the original record book, they didn't know that they copied, copied the books three times until years later when looking over the information or looking over the reports or whatever, they would say that the copies, that they made three copies of every book or something like that. And while they had obtained or gotten one of the copies of the book or two of the copies of the book, they were still missing one copy, which was somewhere else, and they had no idea where. And it would take them many, many years to find. And by then, you know, it's just so obvious. You know. Anyway. Yeah... You know, and there's pictures of them with the tractors. Like I said, every tractor and every truck had a picture that was associated with it. When you were assigned a truck or assigned a tractor, you got a picture taken with it. And you were, and they were really proud. Yeah! It wasn't until years later that they would be regretting those pictures and regretting all of that. Like I said, every time you were assigned an aircraft, there was a picture of you and the aircraft. And that's the way I ran all my governments, America and Germany and other places. Just to keep track of, you know, mostly it was so when if the soldiers sold the truck, sold the tractor, which happened sometimes, they were like, well, I'm to the tractor. Uh, you know, because they were selling a lot of stuff behind my back and stuff like that. So we just started taking pictures of everything, of people with stuff. So when it came missing and people, we found it in the field somewhere, it's like, oh, so that's where that got off to. And then we go talk to whoever did it. So, like I say, oh, well, you know, whatever. I don't really care. Like I said, just like my ship captains and my White Star Line ships and the pictures of the ship captains, uh, we also photographed people with just tractors and trucks and stuff like that that were granted to them or, being, or that they were using them for me. So... Oh, well, you know, some pictures are more valuable than others. And while I say these people are basically insignificant and unimportant, 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 other than the lengths of which they went to to cover things up and to kill people and to try and whatever, and all pointless and useless and no avail and everything else. But I mean, it's like, eh, you know, whatever. They're very much not epic. Most heinous, dude. Most not ethic. But, you know, and trying to pull off this lie where Republicans and Democrats and all that other stuff, and like I said, it would only work if they could actually kill off all the life on, all the people on on the Earth and even every life form in space. And like I said, they only had one slight problem is that many of those life forms were a billion years older than the human life form types and everything else like that. And very hard to kill in general. Kind of like, stop trying to hurt me, <laughs> you know. So the human race or human life form type and the American government or the republic or whatever you might want to call it had a problem. And then, of course, there's all the stuff they did in Panama and everything else and all the other stuff. So, and like I said, the whole time other planets or multiple planets and multiple life form types were watching the Earth and everything else. And oh well. And in fact, there's even a satellite in space from 1850, 1815 or 18 something year, looking down, doing video recording passes with the best and first. It was a German telescope with a camera at the end of it that they would crank as it went across the planet. 
making films of basically the surface of the planet way back when. So, you know, and then of course there's also the aircraft that would fly over the planet and also do the same thing, videotaping the planet every couple of years and had been being done since the barnstorming or biplane era. So, anyway, you know, whatever. I don't really care, you know, it's like, eh, you know, I'm just a sort of star line. And like I said, realistically, they were trying to stop the LSF from launching in the first place. That's what their real goal was. They were trying to keep my colony ship from launching. To keep me from going to space in the first place. But the only problem was that, is that I was very much from space and blah, 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 blah. I was like, eh. Is this my colony ship that I was having built or I crashed or whatever? I ended, you know, and whatever, you know. It's, I, had other, I had other ships, you know. Slow way. So anyway, and 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 the human life form types weren't the only race or life form types I spent time with. I spent time with exoskeletons and the 1.5s and lots of other life forms. And lots of other life forms like to spend time with me. You know, I had a colony ship. I can go anywhere I wanted. Anyway, and I had many other ships too. There are about 500 names or 500 ship names that were actually connected to me or more. I guess, I think, pretty sure. So anyway, like I said, and they were looking for a particular ship or a particular ship name. And like I said, the name on the outside of the ship did not denote who was actually running the ship or me. So, and I would let the people name my ship or let my life forms name my ship or just pick a random name to, pick, to, to name my ship whenever I built a new one. There many times there were planets that would actually name my ship for me. So very much random and all that other stuff. So and I'd bounce around from planet to planet to planet to planet, checking on the particle creation and everything else, and very much living my existence. All before I was Brian. Or even little Lucifer. Because that's my vacation name, all that. So, anyway, like I say, whatever. But yeah, you know, Rodney, Rosalie, and a whole bunch of other people and some Republicans and Democrats are basically fucked. They were fucked, they've been fucked, they will always be fucked. And not in a good way. They were trying to do something very much impossible. Trying to outlive or outexist or outdo a life form that lived hundreds of trillions of billions of years and was actually the creator of a lot of life in the universe. And, eh, whatever. Oh well. Just like Abraham Lincoln, who tried to adopt me and kill me. So, eh, good one. So, shrug. Anyway, and mostly Nixon and everybody else were trying to say or trying to make you think that you were alone in the universe so that you would do things and take actions thinking that no one was ever watching you or no one would actually be knowing about what you were doing, that you were actually hiding something or able to get away with something in the universe. And, well, you're really not. You know, somebody always knows. Somebody always watches you. Somebody sees you. You know, it's like, you know, just like me trying to hide or trying to run from my life forms. It's like, it's the same thing. Pick any star out there. They will probably, they probably all know about the great Lucifer star line. And my colony ships and ships. And I went all over the place. So... Like, there's nowhere for me to go, there's nowhere for, and there was nowhere for them to go. They just didn't necessarily know it or believe it. So, hmm, shrug. Yeah, and even me, I'm just one life form in the universe that created more life forms. So I always assumed that there was something older and something more epic than me somewhere. You know, I mean, I don't know. I don't really care. I had a nice little existence, and it was basically peachy and nice until some very not epic and very stupid like other life forms came along and their personal choices affected my my existence and they really thought that they could get away with it and do things i was like oh well even i i just just didn't ever try to get away with stuff although i was so old that i was able to create some life forms that apparently nobody knew about so anyway because i was so old 
and I created certain life forms and certain planets and did things and then I created everything else and I created you so there's a lot of life forms out there in the universe that you and like probably 70 700,000 other life forms had no idea even existed so anyway yeah you know because they were built they were created like 20 trillion or 90 or 80 trillion years ago or 70 trillion years ago long before a lot of the other life forms came along so anyway i don't really know and it's like yeah you know yeah there were life forms there was a lot of life that people that most life forms didn't know about or didn't even think existed but they did you know and most people had forgotten about it and later on i told these life forms to be quiet and hide and not let their presence be known because you know anyway so and they just kind of hid and hung around at the edges or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, I don't. I forget exactly what they look like or what they what they even were. So, and there's a lot of times when I told life forms to basically stay put and not to move around too much, you know, because you know they would start to bump into other life forms and there could be conflicts and all that other stuff. But they do generally wander some amount. Anyway, eventually, you know, all life always eventually gets curious about what else is around it starts looking and seeing and all that other stuff. And it's just a natural course of what is existence. So, you know, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, so anyway, <clears throat> oh, well, you know, I mean, 